What's up, mystery gang? All right, so your girl is back. I know I've been gone for a while since Halloween. It's probably been like a week and a half now. But you guys, I really haven't been feeling that well. Um, I've been on antibiotics, pain meds. So I really just been trying to rest up. But I'm back. I'm not going to film how I usually film because I'm just not really up to par right now. But you guys, I'm going to do the best I can. Now, before we get started, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. So you're notified every time I post a new video. All right, so you guys, let's get into this story. Now, today we're going to be talking about a case that was very publicized and it was in the media a lot. Now, we're going to be talking about the life of Lori Vallow. All right, so you guys, Lori Vallow was born Lori Cox and she was born on June 26, 1973 in San Bernardino, California. Now, Lori did get married at a very young age. She got married at 19 and she married her high school boyfriend, Nelson. Now, her and Mils Nelson was basically married for about a year or so when they got divorced. It's not really being said why they got divorced, but you guys, they were young. I know a lot of high school sweethearts, they get married young and they end up getting divorced. And I know a lot of high school sweethearts that stay together forever. So anyway, Lori married Nelson, but then they got divorced in 1992. She then met a man by the name of William Lagoa. Now, she married William at the age of 22. So that was basically like, what, a year or so after getting divorced. Now, her and William, they then moved to Texas and they had a son by the name of Kobe in 1996. But you guys, sadly, she divorced William as well in 1998. So that's two divorces in the span of six years now you guys i don't know what it is with this chick and marriage but right after getting divorced in 1998 she then got married again to a man by the name of joseph ryan now when she married joseph ryan he adopted kobe and then they had their own daughter in 2002 and her name was tylee now, you guys, this is where it's get, it gets kind of weird. Right after they had Tylee, like a year later, he then filed for divorce as well. And their divorce was made final in May of 2005. So, y'all, now that's what, three divorces? <laughs> this is crazy. I can't make this up. Now, after all the research that I've done, it really seems like Lori is the problem in all of these situations. Like each marriage that she's in, it's almost like she plays as if she's this person. But then once they get married, she turns into a whole nother person. Not only that, it just seems like the marriage part always ends in failure it's like when they date and it's okay but then as soon as they get married Lori is a whole nother person now you guys I know this story has a lot of characters in it I know it has a lot of twists and turns and marriages and divorce but please just try to stay with me now she's divorced and in 2007 her and Joseph would have been divorced for about two years by that time so something sparked up a fight between Joseph and her brother, Alex. Now, she had a brother by the name of Alex Cox. Now, in this entire saga, Alex Cox seems like the brother that's always there. He's every time Lori is in a situation, he magically appears in the situation. Like every time a police is called out to the home, Alex is there. Every time an incident happens, Alex is there. Now, in 2007, Alex and Joseph got into some type of altercation. It's being said that Alex threatened him with a taser and even threatened to kill him. Alex was arrested and he was charged and convicted. He spent 90, 90 days in jail for that. So, I mean, the dynamic between sister and brother is really, really strong. It's, it's kind of weird, to be honest with you, because every situation that Lori is in, Alex is literally there to her rescue or he's there to help her create a problem. Now, you guys, I don't know what it is with Lori and marriage, but right after getting divorced from Joseph, she then meets Charles Vallow. Now, it's not being said when she met Charles, but she met Charles and she married him literally 10 months after getting divorced from Joseph. So her brother's in jail for assaulting Joseph and she ups and marries a whole nother guy. Now, after she marries Charles, she then has a relative that's struggling to take care of their child. So they adopt the child. This child name is JJ. So now they have Tylee, Kobe, and JJ. 
and the family up and they moved to Kuwait in 2014. Now, they shortly stayed in Kuwait. Then they moved to Arizona in 2015. This is when Charles says that Lori started to take like a really weird turn. She started listening to this podcast and she started watching like this man by the name of Chad Daybell. Now, Chad Daybell basically was a man who did podcasts and he believed that the world was coming to an end. He believed in like doomsday things and it was almost like he ran like this little doomsday cult. Now, Charles is saying that Lori got very, very obsessed with this man. She got obsessed with the end of the world and she started to believe that she was a God and she was superior to all of them. So Charles is saying that Lori stopped caring about the kids and stopped caring about her marriage. And she was just focused on the end of the world and focused on Chad. Chad Daybell say he began his ministry with pure intentions. I would say he has spiritual gifts and abilities. I've seen them in action in very personal situations and I felt their genuineness in, a, in sort of a profound way. Like Daybell, Eric Smith was raised in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, known to outsiders as the Mormon Church. So Lori becomes completely obsessed with Chad, with religion, and with everything that he has going on. Now, he's of the Mormon faith, and he believes that the world is coming to an end very, very soon. So his practice is basically preparing everybody in his ministry for the end of the world. It's like a doomsday cult. So Lori becomes obsessive of this whole situation and she goes missing for 58 days. Now, need I remind you, she's still married to Charles. Charles is saying that her complete attitude just did a 360. Her demeanor changed. And as I was telling you guys before, it's almost like when they meet her, she's a great person. But then after they get married, she turns into like this monster. So Charles is saying that she threatened to kill him. And like I said, she went missing for 58 days now. After the fact of me looking at the situation, I honestly think that she was with Chad for these 58 days, but who knows? Now, she even starts to make appearances on Chad's podcast about the end of the world. This is when Charles knew that it was basically no change in Lori, so he filed for divorce. But you guys, he quickly, when I say quickly, I mean like months later, he quickly withdrew that divorce and said he was going to try to make it work with Lori. But you guys, I think that was probably one of the worst mistakes that he could have made ever. Now, you guys, of course, we all know this did not last. Charles and Lori relationship started going very downhill and they basically broke up, but they were still married. Now, in July of 2019, it's being said that Charles went to go pick up JJ, but Lori did not want him to get JJ. So an argument ensued and Lori's brother, Alex Cox, came to the rescue. Now, you guys, what's so crazy is Alex Cox ended up killing Charles Vallow. So that's her fourth husband that's dead. Now, not only that, a year before this, her husband, Joseph, which is Tylee's biological dad, he died as well. Now, it's being said that he died from a heart attack. But you guys, this is very, very creepy. That's one husband dead. And then a year later, another husband dead. Come on, y'all. Alive? Or? Yeah, there's blood. He's, he's not moving. On July 11th, 2019, Lori Vallow's brother, Alex Cox, called 911 to report he had just killed Charles Vallow, JJ's father, and Lori's estranged husband. I got in a fight with my brother-in-law and I shot him in self-defense. He came at me with a bat. Lori, JJ, and Tylee were all home at the time. As police questioned Lori, she didn't appear rattled or upset, even laughing at one point. How long have you lived here? Like three weeks. Oh, geez. Yeah, okay. That's why the neighbors don't know us. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> like, hi, neighbor, sorry. Arizona detectives say throughout Lori's interview with police, she wasn't phased. Just, it was kind of like a happy go. Now, you guys, what made me so upset with this situation was the police did not do any type of investigation. They just assumed that Alex and Lori's version of events were correct. So, no, Alex Cox was not charged in the murder of Charles Vallow. He said it was self-defense and the police simply said, all righty then. Now, if the police had have done their job and investigated this a little bit more, I don't think this Lori Vallow case would have went as far as it went. Now, after Charles ended up dying, Lori then moved to Idaho with JJ and Tylee. She got an apartment in Rexburg. Now, 
let's guess who stays in Idaho, you guys, Chad Daybell. Now, the crazy thing is her and Chad, they're spending time together, but Chad has a wife by the name of Tammy Daybell. Tammy Daybell was a librarian and she was a really, really good woman. Everybody loved her. Now, this was Chad's wife. Now, everything was going good with Chad and Tammy up until October of 2019 when Tammy just suddenly, she just passed away. This is like the fourth person in this story that just passed away. Now, Tammy's family is saying that she died from natural causes and they did not want an autopsy because Chad never gave them a reason to believe that he would do something to Tammy. They loved each other. They were married for a little while. So, I mean, they just really thought that Chad didn't do nothing sinister. So, Tammy is dead, you guys. But two weeks later, two weeks later after Tammy's death, Chad and Lori, they get married. Now, and that's when police want to start investigating. Why weren't y'all investigated when Charles mysteriously came up dead and they saying it was self-defense? Charles ain't have no prior criminal history and y'all didn't even look into this man's death. But you guys, police saw that something weird was going on. And when they realized that Tammy was dead and two weeks later, her husband was married to another woman whose husband had literally just died months before. That's when they exhumed the body and they said they wanted to investigate Tammy's murder. But you guys, while investigating Tammy's murder, Tylee and JJ's grandparents, they haven't heard from the two kids in months. They're saying that it had been since August, September when the last time they talked to the kids. Now, it's being said that Lori had withdrew the kids from school and told the teachers that the kids were moving to another state because Charles had died and they wanted a new start. But you guys, the kids were only seen a couple of times since that happened. I think Tylee was seen at the National Park, Yellowstone National Park. And JJ was seen on a door, door ring camera playing with kids at the new apartment in Idaho. But you guys, Tylee was not seen in Idaho. So these grandparents, they pushed this and pushed this until investigators started questioning Lori and asking her, where were the kids? They then gave Lori a time frame to produce the kids. Because remember, you guys, Lori had just gotten married to Chad. They went to Hawaii. They got married. They took wedding pictures and the kids were nowhere to be found. Even when they checked the flight logs, the kids did not catch the flights with them, you guys. So something happened to these kids. Last night. Bring the kids. Yep. That's it. That's Bring it. them. That's all we need to know. I don't care are, to ask her anything. Alive? I don't care. Show me they're alive. Just it. I beg the DA, the FBI, everybody that's involved in this, please help us find JJ. Help us find Tylee. I can't ask more. I can't beg more. Relative. So the grandparents, they're really, really pressing the police on finding JJ and Tylee. I don't think they were their biological grandparents, but I think that they were the parents of one of her husbands. If I'm not mistaken, it was Charles' parents. But long story short, they tell police, look, they just got married in Hawaii. The kids are not with them. We haven't seen the kids or heard from the kids in months. Now, Kobe, which is Lori's son, this is her biological son that she had with the second husband. He then tells authorities that he got like this weird text message from Tylee and she had sent him money. And he said that wasn't like Tylee and the text didn't seem like Tylee. But his mom told him that Tylee was OK. And when the police went to her new home in Idaho to check on the kids, she told police that the, the kids were with relatives in another state. Now, I don't know why police fell for this. But they did. Now, another piece of evidence is they saw Lori at this storage unit. Now, when she was at this storage unit, the weird part about it was, you guys, she was putting the kids things in the storage. This was before she moved to Idaho. So this was before she got married. She was putting the kids things in storage. Now, remember, the, the police are way behind on this case. So the things that have already happened, it was months ago. She's already in Hawaii married by the time the police look at this surveillance footage of her putting the kids stuff in storage. But you guys, everything is tying together. And now the police really, really cracked down on her and they want to know where are the kids, you guys. But Lori never produces the kids. A woman is even saying that she was on the same flight as um, Lori and Chad. And she remembers seeing them all over the news. And she asked them like, hey, where are your kids? And Lori gave her like this really rude look and just walked off. Now, right after this, you guys, 
Lori and Chad, they go back to um Idaho and they live like nothing's going on. But that's when police arrest Lori. Video comes from a storage facility in Idaho that authorities say Vallo began renting around the time her children disappeared last fall. The unit reportedly hasn't been touched since police searched it in November, and it may have some valuable items and information inside. This morning, investigators looking for clues in this surveillance video from an Idaho storage facility where Lori Vallow rented a unit. Video obtained by East Idaho News reportedly showing Vallow and several others making numerous trips to the facility in October and November, around the time her children were reported missing, carrying large items in and out of the locker. According to East Idaho News, police obtained a search warrant for Vallow's home and the storage unit, finding children's bikes, photo albums, blankets, and clothing in the unit. Can you tell me where your kids are? It's been one week since Vallow ignored a deadline to physically produce her children, failing to bring 17-year-old Tylee Ryan and 7-year-old JJ to authorities. So you guys, finally, and when I say finally, I mean finally because this years and years and years of Lori literally doing what she wanted to do and getting away with it. I really look at Lori Vallow as a serial killer because whether she killed these people with her own hands or not, Lori Vallow played a huge role in why a lot of people ended up dead in this entire situation. So they arrest Lori and they give her a $5 million bond. And you guys, the reason for this is they're trying to scare her into telling them where the kids are because she's still not talking. Even after having this $5 million bond, she's not talking. But you guys, she's being recorded every conversation that she has. And she has conversations with Chad Daybell. Now, there, it's almost like they were talking in code on their jailhouse conversations because Lori would talk really, really low and she would barely say things. But it's almost like Chad understood what she was saying. Now, they would talk constantly on the phone, but Lori would never say anything about the kids. She would tell Chad she loved him. Chad would tell her, well, look, the police followed me today or the police is coming to check the property. Like it was never really a lot to go off of, but they did talk almost daily. So you guys, on June 10th of 2020, police, they start to search the home of Chad Daybell. Now they start doing a little digging. And once they start digging, that's when Chad and Lori, they make a phone call to each other. And Chad informs Lori of what's going on. Now, literally an hour after this phone call, that's when the police find the remains of JJ and Tylee on Chad's property. They then arrest Chad and now both Lori and Chad are charged in the disappearance and the death of both of the kids. The day police started digging on Daybell's property in search of the missing JJ and his sister Tylee. You can hear the concern in their voices. The house one hour later, the bodies of the two missing children were found. Chad Daybell was arrested, and now they both face trial. Day, probably one of the biggest in this case so far. We're going to show you where we're at. We're across our field from Chad Daybell's home, and we're going to zoom way, way in here to where you can see some tents are set up outside on Chad's property, as well as investigators have been walking around. Investigators from the Rexburg Police Department, the Fremont County Sheriff's Office, as well as the FBI and evidence response team. We're told about 20 members of the FBI, and this is where we believe uh, they have found what they've confirmed to be those human remains now Rexburg police so after investigators see that there is like this crazy tangled web and it's a lot of people that's dead and once they find the remains on Chad's property they then know that maybe Lori is responsible for other deaths now you guys another crazy thing that happened was in December of 2019 so that's basically right after Lori moved to Idaho Alex Cox died of mysterious causes nobody knows what happened he was at a girlfriend's house and he just died now that was crazy and i honestly think that lori was responsible for alex's death as well now after they figure out that all of these people have died 
Then they turn around and start to investigate Joseph Ryan's death. That was her third husband. Now, he just mysteriously died as well, just like Lori's brother, Alex. Now, they open up an investigation because they just think that it's very odd that all of these people are dying around Lori and Chad that you guys joseph's sister which was the man who died mysteriously Lori's ex-husband his sister had a recording of Lori basically saying that she wanted to murder joseph now this was a recording recorded years ago i think when they were married but it speaks volumes because it shows what type of character that Lori has now another thing that i did not mention in this story was charles Vallo, which was Lori Vallo's fourth husband that was killed by alex cox her brother he had two older kids that were basically grown and, you know, out on their own and doing for themselves. Now, when they heard that Charles died, they didn't even hear it from Lori. They text Lori and asked Lori what was going on. I heard that my dad died. Now, Lori then told them like, look, yeah, he passed away. Some things happened, but I don't want to talk about it. Now, this is their dad. The kids was like, no, Lori, you're going to tell us what happened. Now, these kids even contacted authorities as well. But you guys, if authorities had a looked at all of this in the beginning, I don't think JJ and Tyler would be dead right now. Because if they investigated Charles' death, they would have known that something more sinister happened. Even Charles' kids knew that something more sinister happened. But anyway, it goes, Lori and Chad are now being charged with the deaths of JJ and Tylee. Now, I really want to know how you guys feel about this case. I know a lot of true crimers have covered this case, but I wanted to try to give you a different outlook on things and try to break down things a little bit better. Now, my total input on this Lori Vallo case is I honestly think that Lori was batch crazy from the beginning i think that when she married that first man right out of high school when she was 19 years old i think that he saw something in her that was crazy because he shortly got a divorce after that and i honestly think that joseph probably was trying to take the kids from her and that's why something more sinister happened to joseph now they're saying like a heart attack or something like that but obviously they're giving these people something to make them die and to make it look like natural causes because remember tammy died natural causes joseph died natural causes alex died basically of natural causes i think that Lori killed Alex because Alex knew too much. I think once the police started getting on to them and people started questioning where was the kids, I think Lori had to kill Alex. Now, more things have happened in this case, you guys. You have to go read deeper and deeper into this case. Now, Lori does have a niece and this niece is in on it with Lori and Alex and Chad and all of them. Like she's a part of the little cult that they have going on. Now, she even tried to knock off her husband. But her husband basically caught on to it. Somebody was shooting at her husband and he re he reported it. So that Brandon Boudreaux and his ex-wife Melanie are in the middle of a nasty child custody battle. According to new court documents, Boudreaux claims he has evidence that Lori Daybell's brother Alex Cox tried to kill him outside his Gilbert home on October 2nd, 2019. In his filing, he says because it's an open investigation, he can't yet reveal all the evidence, but that Melanie was involved and that a detective will testify to what he's saying. That's a good thing that he got that out because he probably would have been a, one of Lori's victims as well. Now, that's all I have for you guys today. And I'm hoping that I'm feeling better by next week. And I will be back on camera and back recording for you guys. But I really, really, really want you guys' opinion on this case because this case is still ongoing. I want you guys' opinion on why the police took so long to even investigate Lori. And I want to know why the police gave her a timeline to produce the kids. Now, in other situations, I feel like the police would go to the home and check on the kids in which they did do this in that situation, but they never saw the kids. So I'm, I'm trying to understand why didn't they push further when they kept going to her home for welfare checks and didn't see the kids. All right. So that's all I got for you guys today. I know I've been rambling a lot, you guys, but I this story was crazy. All right, so make sure you guys subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new story. And bye, guys.